In this video, we're going to look at how to process JSON data in PHP. I'm going to load some JSON from a file, but this could just as easily come from the result of calling an API or even from a database. So let's start by creating a new file called books.json. JSON has six data types. Strings, which must be enclosed in double quotes. Numbers, which can be integers or floating points. Booleans, which are the strings true and false. Note these have to be lowercase for it to be valid. Null, again, which has to be lowercase. JSON also supports two more complex data types. Arrays, which are ordered collections of values enclosed in square brackets, with each value separated by a comma. The final type is objects. These are sets of name value pairs, like associative arrays in PHP. The key needs to be a unique string enclosed in double quotes. It's separated from the value with a colon. Multiple pairs are separated by commas, and the whole object is enclosed in curly braces. As this stands, even though each value here is valid, this file does not contain valid JSON. We could make it valid by enclosing this all in an array and separating each value with a comma. Now this is a valid JSON file. Note how white space doesn't matter. You can lay out the values however you like. Finally, you can't have comments in JSON files. If you want to validate some JSON to make sure it's valid, there are many websites that will do this, and also format it so it's clearer to understand. Now we know the basics of JSON, let's create a more concrete example. Let's create a dataset for some data about books. So this will be an array where each element is an object. Let's add a title element to the object, which will have a string value. Then a pages element, which will be an integer, and a price element, which will be a floating point value. Then one called available, which will be boolean, and one called language, which can be a string, but can also be null. So let's set the first one to null. Next, a categories element, which contains an array of strings. Finally, an author element, which is an object, containing first name and surname elements. We'll put a comma after this, and add two more objects to the array, with the same keys, but different values. Next, let's load this JSON data into PHP. Let's create a new file called index.php. We'll add the PHP opening tag, then use the file get contents function to load the contents of the JSON file into a variable. Note that this will just result in the contents variable containing a string that contains the JSON. It won't parse it in any way. Let's use the vardump function to output it. Then if we run this by opening it in a browser, we can see it just contains a string. To decode the JSON, we use the JSON decode function. Let's print that out instead of the contents variable. Now we get some structured data, with arrays and objects. Before we look at this output in more detail, let's see how we deal with invalid JSON. Let's make the JSON invalid by using single quotes around one of the strings. Now when we run this, the JSON decode function returns null. Note that no exception occurs. This is invalid JSON, so the function returns null. However, if we replace the entire contents with just null, then this is valid JSON. When we run this, we get the same result. So we need to know if this is actually the result of passing valid or invalid JSON. Let's undo the change we just made so we get the previous content back, although we'll keep these single quotes for now. To see if an error has occurred when passing the JSON data, we can use the JSON last error function. This returns an integer that describes the results of the most recent call to the JSON decode function. There are several constants we can compare this to to get the exact reason passing failed. For example, a syntax error, an encoding error, and so on. To keep it simple though, we'll just use the JSON error non constant to check if no error has occurred. 
So if the return value of the JSON last error function doesn't equal this constant, then an error has occurred. To get a description of the error, we use the JSON last error message function. This returns a string, so let's output that using echo. Note the books.json script still contains invalid JSON because of these single quotes. When we run this, the error message says syntax error. Note the return value of the JSON decode function is null. If we change the contents of the JSON file back to just null again, now when we run it, there is no error message as this is valid JSON. Note that if the JSON is invalid, you'd probably want to do something other than just output the error message and continue the script like this. But for the purposes of this video, I'll just leave it like that. There's an alternative way to see if an error has occurred when decoding the JSON. Using the flags argument of the JSON decode function, we can make an exception occur if there's a parsing error. I'll add the JSON throw on error flag to the JSON decode call, using a named argument for the flags argument, so we don't have to specify the other arguments before it. Let's undo the most recent change to the books.json file, but note that it still contains invalid JSON because of these single quotes. When we run this, now an exception of the JSON exception class is thrown, containing the same error message that the JSON last error message function returned earlier. So we can use a try catch block around the JSON decode call, catching exceptions of the JSON exception class. In the catch block, Let's exit the script and output the message from the exception. When we run this now, we just get the message. Note that if you do enable exceptions like this, the JSON last error and JSON last error message functions will no longer return values that indicate an error has occurred, so you can't use both techniques at once. I'll leave this code here, but I'll comment it out so it's in the source code. Let's go back to the books.json file and make it valid again by changing these back to double quotes. Then, back in the PHP code, instead of using vardump to print the decoded JSON out, let's use the printr function instead. Let's also surround this with an HTML preformatted text element so we can see the output more clearly in the browser. Now when we run this, we see the output of decoding the valid JSON we can see that JSON arrays are decoded as PHP arrays, and JSON objects are decoded as properties of the PHP standard class. If you're not familiar with this class, it's just a generic class with dynamic properties. So we can access these items individually using array and object notation. So for example, before we print out the entire data, let's output the title property of the first array element using the vardump function. Following that, let's print out the pages property of the second array element. When we run this, we get those individual values printed out. Note how the data type of the value is preserved from the JSON. We can access any nested value like this, for example the first name property of the author property of the first array element. We do that like this, first accessing the first array element, then the author property of that, then the first name property of that. When we run this, we get that value printed out. By default, objects in JSON are converted to objects of the standard class in PHP. If you prefer these to be associative arrays instead, there are two ways we can enable this. First, we can pass true to the associative argument of the JSON decode function. This is the second argument, but I do recommend using named arguments so you don't have to worry about the order of them. Now when we run this, we get several errors, but these are because we have arrays now and not objects. We'll fix this in a moment. If we look at the output of the whole data, we can see that what were previously objects are now associative arrays. An alternative way to specify that we want associative arrays is to add the JSON object as array flag so we can remove the true value for the associative argument.
When we run this, it works in the same way. Now we can fix those errors we just saw. As these values are now associative arrays instead of objects, all we need to do is convert these to use array notation instead. Now when we run this, the errors have gone and the individual values are displayed as before. It's up to you if you prefer processing JSON objects as PHP objects or associative arrays. So now when you have some JSON data like this that includes nested data and values of different types, you can use various techniques to process it. For example, let's add a PHP closing tag after this code, followed by an HTML H1 element and a for each loop that loops around the data variable. Then inside the loop, let's display the book's title followed by the author's full name. These are all strings, so we can just output them directly. As the book's categories are an array of strings, let's output them as a comma separated list using the implode function. To display the rest of the data, let's create a table with a header containing header elements for the number of pages, price, availability, and language. Then for the values, we can display the number of pages directly and use the number format function to format the price, which is a floating point value. The availability is a Boolean value, so we can use the ternary operator to output yes or no. The language is a string, but can be null so we'll use the null coalescing operator to output unknown if the value is null. Now when we run this, we see the JSON data formatted in HTML. This is of course just an example of how to process JSON, just to show you that once you've decoded the raw JSON with no errors, it's just regular PHP values, like arrays, strings, integers and so on. There's a link to all the source code shown in this video in the description, along with links to sites shown and relevant documentation. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and as always, thank you for watching.